Hey everyone, in this video I want to go over with you on the flex grow, flex shrink and in total what you can do with the size attribute right over here that comes with the flexbox container inside Elementor. So without further ado, let's dive right in. In this example, I have five boxes that each one of them has the same width as you can see here. Each one of them is 15% of width as you can see inside the layout. That's pretty much all there is to these boxes. And in terms of the container, I went to the container, I set it to full width of 100% and the min width of 100 view height so we can see it in the middle and also I've aligned it by justifying content to the center and then align items also to the center so everything would be centered watch what happens when I close the sidebar we can see here that each and every one of them are growing at the same pace now let's say I want to grow only this box and this box so I want to open up my sidebar and head over to this exact box and then head over to advance and then just hit either to grow but then we can see here that it grows and we don't have any control over it and the same thing is we head over to this box and then we head over to advance and then the same thing we'll just click grow we can see that these ones are growing bigger than the other three. Why is that? Now, if we go back and we can see here that the size will define by grow. So it will grow, but the other ones will stay the same. Meaning if we'll go here to the custom, we can see here that by default, it is set to flex grow and flex shrink. Now, if we'll go here and we'll define flex grow to two or three for that matter, and then we'll head over here to also custom and then head over to three, we can see here that we can define how bigger or smaller they will grow. Now, the same thing will apply if we want to shrink each of every other of these boxes for example let's head over to the middle one and then head over again to advanced and then head over to the size and then to custom and we can see here that now it's set to one as flex grow and flex shrink to one we can see here that it will grow bigger than the other ones but let's say i want to shrink it or i want to define by how fast smaller it will shrink i'll head over to flex shrink and then i'll just increase here the value we can see here that the flex grow also some kind of limits us because as we can see here now it sets to one so you want to set it to zero and then as you can see here now when we just adjust the sidebar we can see that it will shrink even faster than the other ones now you can also make it shrink like this but it will not affect it so much we don't see that quite yet because we want to assign also the other ones the other boxes this one and this one also to advanced and then enable the custom option and then also in the black one head over to advanced and then custom and we can see here that these ones would still be set to flex grow as one and flex shrink to one and this one would shrink even faster because we've defined it to shrink shrink or if we'll head over to custom you'll see here that it will flex shrink to six meaning the flex grow and flex shrink will define how fast these elements will grow or shrink compared to the over size of the container so again the container is this one and the container would define how big or small they can grow this would set to 100 and when i just close the sidebar we can see that each and one of them are growing these ones are growing faster than these ones even though they're set to flex grow one but these ones are set to flex grow three meaning they will eat up the space even faster than these ones we have the middle one which is flex shrink even bigger than the other ones meaning the flex grow and flex shrink will define how fast they'll eat up the space that the container has left let's say i want to zero that out everything let's head over to each and every of the containers let's head over there let's head over there and then just disable the flex or size as we can see here as we can see here we have space space on the left and space on the right the bigger the value here the faster it will shrink compared to the other elements and the same thing would apply to the flex grow the bigger the value the bigger it will grow or faster it will eat up the space as we can see here and as we've seen right now i want to show you a few more examples because it's nice to have these boxes but let's say i want to see how that would apply if i'm styling up a website so if i'll scroll a little bit down here i have something here prepared i have three of these gentlemen over here each one one of them has his own title and we can see here we have a little excerpt about each and every one of them let's say i want to make the ceo bigger than the other ones now the same thing will apply here we'll head over to our ceo we'll edit it and then we'll head over to our size we'll enable the custom size and as we can see here it will automatically will define the flex grow as we've seen before to one and the flex shrink to one these are the default values as usual it sets to flex grow and flex shrink to one and one now if i'll set the other ones also to custom as 
as we can see here, flex row, flex shrink set to one. And also the other one will also flex row and flex shrink to one and one. You might be able to see that each and every one of them is set to 30%. This one is 30%, this one is 30%, and this one is 30%. Again, my overall container is set to 100%, meaning I have some space that I can play with. Let's say I want to head over and back to my CEO and I want to define the flex row to bigger. And we can see here that his space is bigger than the other ones. If I'll close my sidebar, we can see here that he has more room to grow than these ones. That is good. And we can also define the other ones to again, flex grow bigger and then the other one also bigger. That would let him take a little less space than we had before. Now, this example is quite good, but let's say I want to space out other elements than just elements in a row. The other thing that I wanted to show you here is if we scroll to the bottom here, I have a carousel here and I have some products as we can see here. I have a cool hat, cool vanilla jacket and cool green jacket. We have a typical example where I have some elements that are taking up space, but the button is not aligned as the other buttons. One cool thing that you can do, you can also apply the flex row and flex shrink to specific elements. Let's say it's a text element or a button element or an image element. So the flex grow and flex shrink does not only apply to the overall container as we've seen maybe on these boxes or on these elements. As we can see here, these are a few elements that are grouped together. As we can see an image, title and a excerpt or some information about this CEO. So as we can see here, let's say we'll head over to our description over here of our cool vanilla jacket, and then we'll head over to our advanced, and then we'll head over to size, and we'll head over and just click grow. And we'll see here that it will grow and will take up much more space as it can take. And then we'll push the other element to the bottom, and then we'll have the bottom button, as we can see here, align with the other buttons, as we can see here. So just to summarize, flex grow and flex shrink are really, really valuable and really useful tools for you to use once you know how to use them. The other thing that I haven't shown you so far is the size none, meaning if we'll scroll to the top over here and let's say I want to head over to the beginning of the video and I want to head over to this box and I'll head over and enable the custom and enable also here the custom option on this box. Now the option of the size of none, what it would do, it will tell the element, okay, I don't want to grow nor either to shrink. So my size is my size. That's what essentially it does. I will enable the none and you'll be able to see that no matter what happens here, even though it grows, but you might be saying here, okay, fine, but I see that it shrinks or grows. Now, this is due to the fact that I've enabled over in the layout that it's on 15%. Now, if we're looking at the percentage, you can see here that it takes or it calculates automatically because it is a responsive value. It will take the 15% of the 100% of my screen view. Now, if I'll set it, for example, to 300 pixels, oops, to 300 pixels. And if I'll try to shrink it, you'll be able to see that it doesn't matter if I'll scroll my sidebar to the left or to the right, my size of this box would not change because it's 300 pixels. Doesn't matter if the other elements are growing or shrinking. We have other thing that is coming up right now. As we can see here, now it's on 300 pixels. And the other thing that I can also define is basically find the other boxes also to pixels. So let's say I'll define all the other ones to 300 pixels. And then this one also 300 pixels here, 300 pixels but you might be able to see here that these might look like they are the same size, but let me show you that in a few minutes, how that changes. So that's what over here, 300 pixels, and also that layout 300 pixels. Let's enable the flex row on these ones. As we can see here, we have flex row of three and then flex row of three. Let's hide our panel over here. And again, you can see here that even though each of every of these boxes are defined as 300%, the flex row and flex shrink comes into play. But let's say I want to enable this one to shrink and also this one to shrink. And this one, I would just enable the none. So it will stay 300%. Doesn't matter what's the value of the full width, as we can see here. So these one will grow, these ones will shrink, and this one would stay the same. And yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to show you in this video, how you can work with flex grow, flex shrink, and the size attribute over in the elements or on the containers inside Elementor. I really hope this video helped you. And if it did, I'd be really glad to, if you leave a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any video that I post on Elementor, WooCommerce, or WordPress. And as always, I'll be seeing you in the next one.